It is apparent that there are at minimum two purportedly Christian faiths in the U.S. One committed to the whole of scripture and its implications on the whole of life and one committed to using scripture to uphold a way of life. This is the division. Of course, the most pressing application of this divide presently and historically is the argument for the equitable treatment of this nation's black citizens. I do not say that in any way to disregard the many horrors done to the indigenous peoples who once occupied this land in the millions. It is apparent though that the gospel for one side of this divide is simply not full enough to capture cosmic redemption and with it the hundred plus verses about justice and equity. In fact, as Dr. Anthony Bradley wrote, and I may misquote this or butcher it a little bit, the center of the redemptive story after all is the covenant God made with all that he created and the cosmic redemption he promised to it, not God's sovereignty nor substitutionary atonement. But why the divide? Why a supreme focus on transformed hearts while standing firm in unchallenged systems? There are several reasons, both historic and immediate, but one stands out more in our context. In fact, in their groundbreaking work, Divided by Faith, Dr. Uh, uh, Michael Emerson and Christian Smith wrote, evangelicals usually fail to challenge the system, not just out of concern for evangelism, but also because they support the American system and enjoy its fruits. They share the Protestant work ethic, support laissez-faire economics, and sometimes fail to evaluate whether the social system is consistent with Christianity. Christian Smith wrote that in Divided by Faith, a book that you should read. In other words, the push to reach more people places them at odds with challenging systemic injustices. The support of the American system and the enjoyment of its fruits prohibits them from challenging systemic injustice. A failure to even evaluate whether a system is consistent with Christianity keeps them from fighting against systemic injustice. And I would add, Making God's sovereignty for the reformed camp or substitutionary atonement for all others, the very center of the redemptive story, rather than God's covenant, prevents them from fighting for economic and ethnic justice. The tension for us who see and who sense this divide, often the struggle for us as well-meaning people, is that for the sake of unity, we avoid opposing wrongs. And for the sake of peace, we abandon the conflict necessary to secure rights.